The Kubas is a spirited dog of keen intelligence, determination, courage, and curiosity. Normally patient and gentle, the Kubas can also be fiercely protective in situations which it feels threaten its property or territory. <coughs> These traits have survived over many hundreds and perhaps thousands of years, for the Kubas is thought to be one of the oldest of the working breeds. It may have arrived in what is now Hungary from the Middle East as early as 5,000 years ago. With its beginnings as a livestock guard, the Kubas eventually became used as a territorial guard dog. Serving as an imposing guard dog, the Kuvas survived the centuries of warfare and cultural conflict in Eastern Europe to finally arrive in the United States in 1930. It was admitted to AKC registration in 1931. You'll be seeing many Kuvas during this presentation. Some are outstanding examples of the breed, others are less so. But all will help your understanding of the Kuvas. In general appearance, the Kuvas is a large, sturdily built working dog of medium bone and good muscling. He should be well balanced, neither cobby nor lanky. The overall impression should be one of strength and activity and ability to patrol rough terrain for long periods of time. In proportion, the Kuvas trunk and limbs should form a rectangle. That is, the dog should be slightly longer than it is tall, as measured from sternum to buttocks. As for size, dogs should stand 28 to 30 inches at the withers, bitches 26 to 28 inches, dogs smaller than 26 inches, and bitches smaller than 24 inches are disqualified. Dogs should weigh about 100 to 115 pounds, while bitches should weigh about 70 to 90 pounds. Size alone should not be the basis of your evaluation. Balance and symmetry within the standards range is the ideal. Let's begin our detailed discussion of the Kuvas with the head, which is an extremely important part of your evaluation. The proportions of the head must be correct to produce the typical Kuvas look. To begin with, the length of head, measured from tip of nose to occiput, should be slightly less than half the height of the dog at the withers. This dog's length of head is correct. The width of the head should be half its length. From the side, you can see that the skull is elongated but not pointed. It should be fairly flat. The occiput should not be pronounced. The stop should be defined but not abrupt, raising the forehead gently above the plane of the muzzle. The muzzle itself is straight on top, with its length in proportion to that of the skull. It is never pointed or snipey. The underjaw is well developed. This exhibit appears domed in skull and has too much stop. This dog has a Roman nose, and the muzzle is somewhat snipey. This head is correctly proportioned as seen from the side. The skull is flattened and fairly broad. Note again the strong, straight muzzle and well-developed underjaw. From the front, see how the width of the head is about half its length. There is a pronounced longitudinal midline on the forehead, like this which widens as it slopes to the muzzle. Cheeks are flat, and there are bony arches above the eyes. See how the skin is dry with no loose flues on the muzzle. The nose is large and black, with well-opened nostrils. Lips are black and closely cover the teeth. The teeth can meet in either a scissors or a level bite, although the scissors bite is preferred there should be full dentition. Overshot or undershot bites are disqualifications. Note, too, 
that the inside of the mouth should be preferably black, as the pigmented skin is tougher and more resistant to insect bites and the sun's rays. See how the upper lip covers only the upper jaw, while the lower lip is tight and never pendulous. Eyes are almond-shaped, like these, and set well apart. They should appear somewhat slanted. Eyelids are tight, with no haw. The eyes should be dark brown. The darker, the better. Blue eyes are highly undesirable. Ears are V-shaped, with the tip slightly rounded. They're set well back between the level of the eye and the top of the head, and are rather thick. Correct length should be such that when the ear is pulled forward, the tip of the ear covers the eye on the same side of the head. From the front, you can see that the widest part of the ear is about level with the eye, and that the inner edge of the ear lies close to the cheek. The outer edge turns slightly away, forming a V. Even when the dog is relaxed, the ears should not be cast backward, nor should they be folded. Here again is the typical Kuva's head, with correct proportions and proper eye and ear set. Now let's consider the Kuva's neck and forequarters. The neck should be muscular, like this, and of medium length. It is arched at the crest, as this one is. There should be no dewlap. This correct neck blends smoothly into the muscular shoulders. The shoulder blades are well laid back, forming a right angle with the upper arm and being about the same length. Remember that the Kuva's traditional function as a working animal on varied terrain requires a muscular, well-constructed front assembly. From the front, there should be powerful muscling of the shoulders, but not so much as to be overbuilt and muscle-bound. Be sure to feel through the coat to confirm your assessment of conformation. The elbows are held close to the body, turning neither in nor out, and the forelegs are straight, well-muscled, and medium-boned. The feet are round and tight, with resilient, thick, black pads. Dark nails are preferred. The forelegs should appear straight from the side, too, with hard, dry joints. The pasterns should be strong, with only a slight slope for shock absorption. Dew claws on the forelegs should not be removed. Note again the correct angulation of shoulder blade and upper arm the well-developed, slightly protruding forechest, and the withers slightly higher than the back. All are correct. See how the chest is deep, reaching nearly to the elbows with well-sprung ribs. The back is of medium length and should be straight, firm, and quite broad. The back of this dog is too long for the length of leg and his sagging, weak top line is incorrect. A back that is too short or is roached is also incorrect. This dog's top line is correct, straight, firm, and broad. The body is of medium length, giving the dog a well-balanced appearance. The loin is short, muscular, and tight. See how the croup is well-muscled and slightly sloping. The brisket should be deep, well-developed, and parallel to the ground, like this. The stomach is tucked up. The tail is carried low, like this, and should be long enough to reach at least to the hock. It hangs close to the body and turns up slightly at the end, although when the dog is excited, the tail may be elevated to the level of the loin. The hindquarters are characterized by wide, long, and strong thighs and well-bent stifles. Angulation of the hindquarters should be in balance with that of the forequarters. This dog appears too straight in the rear. Overangulation is also to be faulted. These correct hindquarters are strong and muscular with well-bent stifles. 
The hocks, or metatarsus, are short and broad and of great strength. The rear feet are somewhat longer than the front feet, but are still round and tight with thick black pads. Dew claws, if any, should be removed. From the rear, you can see the strength and powerful muscling of the hind legs, straight columns of support, and low hocks. Be sure to feel for good muscling. Now let's discuss the Kuva's distinctive coat. It's a double coat with a moderately coarse outer coat and a fine undercoat. Note how the skin is heavily pigmented, tending toward slate gray or black. The more pigmentation, the better. There is a great variety in amount of wave or curl in the Kuva's coat. The coat ranges from straight to quite wavy, like this one is and there is a definite pattern of hair growth. A very wavy or curly coat is no more or less preferable than a straight coat, as long as the texture is correct. The head, muzzle, ears, and paws are covered with short, smooth hair. There can be a mane on the neck, especially on adult males, that extends to and covers the chest. On the legs, the hair on the forelegs up to the elbows and on the hind legs below the thighs is short and smooth. Feathering appears on the back of the forelegs down to the pasterns with the hair about two or three inches long. The dog's body and the sides of the thighs are covered with medium length hair, while the hair on the back of the thighs and on the tail is four to six inches long. Remember, as you judge the Kuvaz, that it's natural for the breed to lose most of the long coat in warm weather. A summer coat should not be penalized. Length of hair is quite dependent on sex and age of dog, as well as the season of the year. As for color, the Kuvaz is always white. No other coat color is allowed. Since the Kuvaz is a working dog, it is normal for discoloration to occur. Judges should part the coat to locate the natural white under any discoloration. Coat color other than white is a disqualification. The Kuvaz should move with an easy, free, elastic gait. The feet travel close to the ground like this with the hind legs reaching well under the dog, nearly meeting or even passing the imprint of the front feet. Ease of motion is important, as the Kuvaz must cover rough terrain for long periods of time. Coming toward you, the front legs should not be parallel, but actually move rather close together toward the ground. At faster speeds, the feet will converge toward a center line. Going away, the hind legs also show convergence, but the column of support is straight from hip to pad. You can see the powerful drive from the rear. This dog toes in, which should be faulted. And this exhibit is crossing in the rear. Here again is correct movement for the Kuvaz, easy and free. The head is normally carried low at the level of the shoulders. The Kuvaz should be shown naturally on a loose lead, not strung up. Correct angulation and body proportions will produce this steady tireless movement and head carriage. Finally, a word about temperament. The Kuvaz, while known for his gentleness and patience at home, can also be bold, fearless, and courageous when the occasion calls for it. He is reserved and suspicious of strangers. He has strong guarding instincts and will act on his own initiative with no hesitation, making him a less than perfect show dog. Because of this natural guarding instinct, the Kuvaz must be well trained to stand for normal examination by strangers in the show ring. The typical Kuvaz is slow to make new acquaintances. 
but will protect those he knows with unswerving loyalty. Small wonder that the Cougars has survived for so many centuries as a devoted guard and trusted companion.